Hi, Peter Johns here. This is going to be the first of a series of videos on the many myths and misconceptions of vertigo. Over 30 years ago, when I studied emergency medicine textbooks to prepare for my final specialty exams, the chapters on vertigo were filled with a number of myths, many of which I still hear repeated today. In fact, just recently, a junior learner told me about a case of posterior canal BPPV that they had seen the week before. The patient had vertical upward nystagmus during the Dix-Hallpike test, and this led the attending physician to ask for a CT head because they, were, they thought that this was worrisome for a central cause for their vertigo. This is the myth that drives me the most crazy. If you see vertical nystagmus, it's always a central cause for the vertigo. The short answer as to why this is a myth is although sustained spontaneous vertical nystagmus is always caused by a central cause of vertigo, it's rarely seen by frontline providers. Vertigo experts probably see it a lot more than we do. Here's what it might look like. This man's nystagmus was sustained and not brought on by position change. It did increase when he looked up. This was the first presentation of multiple sclerosis, a fairly rare thing. In contrast, vertical upward nystagmus during a Dix-Hallpike test is very commonly seen by frontline providers. And as seen here, it is indeed vertical upward with a rotary component towards a downward ear. This pattern of nystagmus is pathognomonic for a posterior canal, BPPV, and it eliminates any concern for a central cause. Again, you can see the vertical component in this patient. So 10 to 30 seconds of vertical upward nystagmus seen during the Dix-Hallpike test, very common, and assuming the clinical story fits with BPVV, it's completely benign. Persistent spontaneous vertical nystagmus or downward nystagmus seen with the patient sitting or lying still much less commonly seen, and yes, that means a central cause for the vertigo. So stop getting CT scans or MRIs of the brain when you have a patient with a story consistent with BPPV, has no spontaneous nystagmus, but during the Dix-Hallpike test you see vertical upward nystagmus. These patients have BPPV, cure them with an Epley maneuver, and send them home. I kind of like delving into the history of vertigo, so let's go back and see if we can figure out how this myth developed and has lasted so long. And we'll have to go back almost 100 years to 1921 when Professor Robert Barani described a patient with posterior canal BPPV. He described rotary nystagmus towards the downward ear and vertical component upwards. And he also noted when the patient looked towards her downward ear, it became more rotational. And when the patient looked towards her upward ear, it became more vertical. This is completely correct. Nicely done, Professor Barani. Congratulations on your soon-to-be 100th anniversary of getting the nystagmus right in posterior canal BPVV. 31 years later, Dixon Hallpike described the gold standard test for posterior canal BPVV that bears their name, and said the nystagmus seen during their test was chiefly rotatory towards the downward ear, and that there was generally a horizontal component. But there is no horizontal component to a positive Dix Hallpike test and they didn't mention the vertical upward nystagmus, which every modern vertigo expert knows is commonly seen in a positive Dix-Hallpike test. But I don't think they were seeing things. I believe they were seeing a significant number of patients with horizontal canal BPVV, which was not defined until the mid-1980s, and which remains unfamiliar to many frontline providers today. And in horizontal canal BPVV, there is horizontal nystagmus. This man was having a left ear tested for BPPV and he develops horizontal nystagmus, which is not a positive dix pike test, and he does not have posterior canal BPPV. Instead, he needs a supine roll test to see if he has horizontal canal BPPV. My video on dix and hall pike test revisited goes into this in quite a bit of detail, as well as explaining why the nystagmus seen in a positive dix hall pike test becomes more vertical upwards when their gaze is directed towards their upward ear. The link is on your screen. So the 1952 landmark paper by Dixon Hallpike no doubt led directly or indirectly to Rosen's emergency medicine textbook incorrectly stating in seven editions from 1983 to 2010 that a positive Dix Hallpike test was horizontal rotational nystagmus instead of the correct answer vertical upwards and rotational nystagmus. And Titanelli's second edition, which I also studied in 1982, had very little to say about vertigo, and the only mention I could find about nystagmus was that if you see vertical 
nystagmus, that's coming from the brainstem, and that obviously would not be good. You can be assured that Tintinelli's most recent 9th edition, which was co-authored by myself and Brian Goldman, contains up-to-date, accurate information to help emergency physicians assess and manage vertigo. Luckily, by the late 1990s, a very nice review article about BPBV by Furman in the New England Journal of Medicine had an illustration of how the nystagmus was vertical and rotatory by showing these little red arrows pointing vertically upwards on the forehead and rotating towards the downward ear. That's as good as you can represent it with a 2D illustration. Remember, this was six years before YouTube was a thing. And also the text in Furman's paper stated that the diagnostic criteria for a positive Dix-Hulpike test was torsional and vertical nystagmus beating towards the forehead. So it's not like no one in the last century knew that a positive Dix-Hulpike test was vertical upward nystagmus, it just wasn't well known by frontline providers. But this time, after having cured a number of patients with posterior canal BPBV, I knew about it and was teaching it to other physicians. Then, in the midst of the SARS outbreak in 2003, I went to the same conference, Society of Academic Emergency Medicine, in Boston. While I was walking around looking at posters, I came across an interesting looking one entitled, Common Misconceptions in the Evaluation of Emergency Department Dizzy Patients Parallel Those Found in Emergency Medicine Textbooks. I've met now David Newman Toker, a neurotologist, vertigo expert from Johns Hopkins, a number of times over the years. But this was the first time we met, and it was the first time I found someone else who was concerned about the emergency medicine textbooks were wrong about vertigo. Meeting him gave me hope that the misconceptions in the textbooks could be corrected, and also the inspiration of meeting him eventually led to me writing the vertigo chapter in Tintinelli. David Newman Tucker's paper was eventually published with a bit of a less inflammatory title, and it showed how family doctors and emergency physicians were holding hard onto this vertical nystagmus is bad myth in the first decade of this century. When he asked generalists, emergency physicians and family physicians, versus vertigo specialists a true or false question, the question was, classic positive Dix-Hulpike shows vertical and torsional nystagmus, which is of course true, only 31% of the generalists thought it was true, versus 90% of the vertigo specialists calling it true. In the 2010 decade, Kerber showed that emergency physicians are still not letting go of that myth. These are the comments given by emergency physicians when they saw a, a video of a classic positive dix pike with vertical upward and rotary nystagmus. Just more proof of how persistent this myth is. Comments such as horizontal nystagmus is less worrisome than vertical nystagmus, or vertical nystagmus is possibly central cause, or Vertical nystagmus, not something I would associate with BPBV. Or vertical nystagmus, worrisome for central cause. Or I thought vertical nystagmus was only seen in PCP toxicity. And you can still find these misconceptions today. I just googled nystagmus in Dix Hallpike test, and only 6 out of the first 10 hits describe the vertical and rotational nystagmus. And the ones that do often describe the vertical component as upbeating, which is a made up word. The word upbeat means full of hope, happiness, and good feelings. I've never had a patient describe the feeling they had during a Dix-Hallpike test as a good feeling. Why don't vertigo experts stick with vertical upwards during the Dix-Hallpike test so emergency physicians and others will understand what they mean? Now, I'm not going to say where I got this information from, but let's just say it was in a kind of Wikipedia for emergency medicine. This table of the characteristics of peripheral versus central cause of vertigo has very little information in it that would allow a novice to make a, a correct diagnosis in any patient with vertigo. And again, it doesn't allow that BPVV, a peripheral vertigo, may demonstrate vertical nystagmus. And this website also states that a positive Dix-Hallpike test is only rotational nystagmus. Next year, in 2021, it will be the 100th anniversary of Robert Barani's description of the nystagmus scene in posterior canal BPVV. Wouldn't it be nice if during that year, the myth that all vertical nystagmus was bad was ended, and people stopped referring to vertical upward nystagmus as upbeating? If this myth was busted, I for one would be filled with hope, happiness, and good feelings. Thanks for watching, people.